Follow LangFocus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hello everyone, welcome to the LangFocus channel and my name is Paul. Today's topic is the Indonesian language, or Bahasa Indonesia, as it's called in Indonesian. Indonesian is closely connected with Malay, so if you haven't seen my video on the Malay language yet, I recommend that you watch that first before you watch this video. Indonesian is based on Malay, though it has evolved and taken on some uniquely Indonesian features. There are about 43 million native speakers of Indonesian and about 155 million second language speakers of Indonesian, mainly in Indonesia, where it's the national language and the sole official language. Why does Indonesian have so many more second language speakers than native speakers? Well, there are hundreds of languages spoken in Indonesia, and Indonesian functions as a lingua franca between speakers of different languages. It's the language of education and of media, and these days everybody learns Indonesian, but most Indonesians still speak a different regional language as their native language. Plus, Indonesian, the national language. How was the Indonesian language born? Indonesian is based on the Malay language, which has been a lingua franca of trade and of the elite throughout the Malay archipelago for centuries. The story of Indonesian begins during the colonial period. In the early 17th century, the VOC, or the Dutch East India Company, established a trading post at Batavia, the site of present-day Jakarta, and over the following three centuries expanded into other areas of present-day Indonesia. The Dutch East India Company made Malay the administrative language of its trading outpost. In 1799, the Dutch East India Company went bankrupt and the Dutch government took control of the colony. In the late 18th century, the British East India Company had also arrived in the archipelago, and in 1824, a treaty between the British and the Dutch divided the area between the British to the north and the Dutch to the south. In the Dutch colony, the promotion of the Dutch language and education in Dutch began, but only to a limited extent, mostly for the elite. Compared to other colonial powers, the Dutch were not really interested in changing the culture of the colonized people. Their main goal was to facilitate trade. Therefore, since Malay was already a lingua franca that could facilitate trade, there was no reason for them to introduce Dutch as a lingua franca. The Dutch promoted Malay as the language of education, recognizing Riau Malay, the classical Malay spoken in the Malacca and Johor Sultanates, as the standard language. This standard form of Malay continued to develop with the abundance of Malay literature in the 19th century, and in the 20th century, Malay linguists published dictionaries and grammars to further standardize and modernize the language. The Dutch language never became widespread in Indonesia. In fact, in 1940, only 2% of Indonesians spoke Dutch. But even though the role of the Dutch language was very limited, a large number of Dutch loanwords entered the Malay language in the areas under Dutch control. And this is one of the things that made the Indonesian variety of Malay different from other varieties. In the early 20th century, a pro-independence movement arose and people throughout the Dutch colony began to see themselves as a single people, Indonesians. The term Indonesia was a new term for the archipelago, created by European ethnologists, but adopted by nationalists in the Dutch colony. At the Youth Conference of 1928, young nationalists declared the Youth Pledge with three ideals, one motherland, one nation, and one language. The language they chose was the Indonesian variety of Malay, which they named Bahasa Indonesia. When Indonesia declared independence in 1945, Indonesian was declared the national language of the new country. But why Indonesian? At the time of independence, Indonesian was the native language of only 5% of the population, while Javanese was the native language of over 40% of the population. So why wasn't Javanese chosen to be the national language? Well, that would have shown favoritism to Indonesia's largest ethnic group, undermining the national unity of the country. But Indonesian, previously known just as Malay, had been a lingua franca throughout the archipelago for centuries, so people in various regions of the country already knew some Malay. It was also a much simpler language than Javanese, and could realistically be learned by millions of people as a second language. Indonesian turned out to be the right choice, successfully becoming the language of government, education, trade, and communication between people in different regions of the country. Indonesian completely replaced the former colonial language Dutch as the language of public life, and that's something that's very rare in former colonies. Today, Indonesian is still the second language of most Indonesian people, but it's becoming increasingly more common as a native language, especially in the cities. That's because people from all over the country move to the big cities, so rather than speak their native regional languages, they speak Indonesian instead. And some of them get married with each other, and they raise their children speaking Indonesian as their primary language. So, what is Indonesian like? Well, undoubtedly, one of the things that made Indonesian so successful as a national language so quickly was its simplicity. 
If you've seen my video on Malay, then you're already familiar with the simplicity of Indonesian because in its standard form, it's very close to standard Malay, just with some different vocabulary. Here are some features of Indonesian. Indonesian has simple phonology and orthography. In general, one letter represents just one sound. Indonesian has simple SVO sentence structure. There are no case inflections in Indonesian. There is also no grammatical gender in Indonesian. There's no plural form in Indonesian. And explicit plurals are made by reduplication. Reduplication meaning that you repeat the word again. And perhaps best of all, no verb conjugations. Let's look at a few Indonesian sentences and we'll identify some of those features. Mereka sedang memasak telur untuk sarapan. This sentence means they are cooking eggs for breakfast. Word for word, it's they now cook egg for breakfast. We can see that this sentence is SVO. As I said before, there are no verb conjugations. So how do we know that this action is happening now? Well, it's because of this word right here, sedang. This is an adverb that indicates that something is happening right now. You can change the tense of the verb by changing this adverb. Here's another sentence. Mereka sudah memasak telur untuk sarapan. After changing the word sedang to sudah, the sentence now means they cooked eggs for breakfast in the past tense. The adverb sudah means something like already and shows that an action has been completed. How about the future tense? Mereka akan memasak telur untuk sarapan. Here, akan is the future adverb. Another example. Seperti saya, dia sering berlibur ke Lombok. This means, like me, he often travels to Lombok. Word for word, it's like I, he often travel to Lombok. Another example. Apa kamu mau duduk? This means, do you want to sit? Apa is a yes or no question marker. So word for word, it's question, you want sit. But apa is often left out in speech. And notice that to express desire, you can just add mau right before another verb. The second verb doesn't change its form at all. Another example. Saya menulis surat untuk teman saya. This means I write letters for my friend. Word for word, it's I write letter for friend, I. Notice that the word for letters, surat, is the same as the singular form. Also notice that possession is shown by placing a personal pronoun right after a noun. Teman saya, literally friend I, means my friend. This makes it quite easy to form possessives. Another example. Saya tidak suka makan kacang. This means I don't like eating peanuts. Word for word it's I no like eat peanut. So we negate a sentence by adding tidak before the verb. And notice that, similar to the word mau, which means want, we can express like by placing the word suka right before another verb. Kacang sudah dimakan. This means the peanuts have already been eaten. Word by word, it's peanuts already be eaten. The verb dimakan is a passive. Let's take a look at some of the verbs from the above sentences. You can see that these Indonesian verbs have two parts, a root in black and an affix in red. Indonesian has many such affixes that are added to roots to make verbs and nouns. One example, the root tulis, meaning to write. We have menulis, to write, ditulis, to be written, tertulis, to be written, tulisan, something that's written, menuliskan, to write something down, penulis, a writer, penulisan, the process of writing, bertuliskan, to have, written on it, bertulisan, with the writing or words, you can see more examples of such affixes in my video on Malay, which functions in the same way. Affixes are the most challenging part of learning Indonesian, at least for a lot of learners. But you can make use of that feature of the roots and affixes to help you learn new words through their connections with other words. Standard Indonesian really is a simple language compared to other languages, but that's standard Indonesian, which is normally used as the written language and in formal contexts. The way Indonesian is spoken in daily life is often fairly different from standard Indonesian. Different varieties of colloquial Indonesian are spoken around the country and they're influenced by the local native language in that area. These different varieties of Indonesian are referred to as Bahasa Gaul. The Bahasa Gaul of Jakarta is influenced by Batawi, the Malay Creole language that's native to Jakarta, as well as by Javanese and Sundanese, since people from all over Indonesia move to Jakarta. Let's look at the Bahasa Gaul of Jakarta and see how it differs from standard Indonesian. Here's a sentence we looked at before. Mereka sedang memasak telur untuk sarapan. Now in Bahasa Gaul, mereka lagi masak telur buat sarapan. The first difference we see is that the word sedang, which indicates present tense, is lagi in Bahasa Gaul. Lagi is also used in standard Indonesian to mean again or still, but it's not used as a present tense marker like this. Another difference is that the verb memasak is used in its root form masak without the prefix. Then we have a sound difference in the word telur, which becomes like telur, and then untuk becomes buat which can be used in standard Indonesian, but the meaning is more like in order to. 
In bahasa gaul, you can use it to simply mean for. Mereka sudah memasak telur untuk sarapan. Now in bahasa gaul, mereka sudah masak telur buat sarapan. Here notice that the word sudah is reduced to udah. Mereka akan memasak telur untuk sarapan. Now in bahasa gaul, mereka bakal masak telur buat sarapan. And here notice that the future marker akan becomes bakal. Another example. Seperti saya, dia sering berlibur ke Lombok. Now in bahasa gaul, kayak gue, dia sering liburan ke Lombok. The first difference here is that the word seperti, meaning like, changes to kayak. Then notice that saya becomes gue, which is a loan word from Batawi, and berlibur becomes liburan. The root is the same, but the affixes are different. Apa kamu mau duduk? In this example, we'll see two variations of bahasa gaul. The first variation is a simple, casual sentence. Kamu mau duduk ga? Notice that the yes or no question marker apa isn't there. Instead, at the end you see ga, which means no in bahasa gaul. So it's like you want to sit, no? The second variation is used for close friends or people the same age as you or younger. Lu mau duduk ga? The second person pronoun is lu, which I believe is a loan word from Chinese, which is present in the Batawi Creole language of Jakarta. In this example, let's look at some options for first person pronouns. Saya menulis surat untuk teman saya. Saya nulis surat buat teman saya. Aku nulis surat buat temanku. Gua nulis surat buat teman gue. In a casual polite sentence, you use saya even in bahasa gaul. In a more casual familiar sentence, aku is used. And when aku is used as a possessive, a shortened form is attached to the end of the noun. In a more intimate sentence, gua or gue is used. Also notice that menulis loses its prefix, but it doesn't revert to its root form tulis. Instead, it maintains the nasal sound at the beginning. And one more small difference we can see is that the word for friend, teman, is pronounced more like teman. And another example. Saya tidak suka makan kacang. Now in bahasa gaul, gua nggak demen makan kacang. Again, here we see the pronoun gua, and we see that the negative tidak becomes nga, which is related to the word ga, which we saw before. And in bahasa gaul, suka sometimes becomes demen. And one last example. Kacang sudah dimakan. Now in bahasa gaul, kacang sudah dimakan. Here the only difference is that sudah becomes udah, as we saw before. So you can see that the colloquial Indonesian of Jakarta is fairly different from standard Indonesian. And there are varieties like this spoken around the country. The influence of the other languages of Indonesia on colloquial Indonesian is one of the things that sets the language apart from other varieties of Malay. Indonesian is definitely a fun language to study and communicating with Indonesians in their national language and lingua franca is an amazing experience. The question of the day for Indonesians. To what extent do you speak standard Indonesian? And to what extent do you speak Bahasa Gaul? And in what situations? Leave your comments down below. And for learners of Indonesian, what's been your experience communicating with Indonesian people? Do you find the standard Indonesian that you learn at textbooks to be useful? Or do you feel like you should be learning more of the language as it's really spoken? Be sure to follow Lang Focus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And again, I'd like to say thank you very much to my Patreon supporters, especially the ones right here on the screen, for their monthly pledges. Thank you very much and have a nice day.